You know that feeling when you're taking a shower and the water pressure is just wrong? Oh, yeah. They're Either not... it's this like weak trickle that makes you want to scream or it's blasting you like a fire hose, splashing water everywhere. Uh huh. Trying to rinse your hair and it takes forever. Exactly. I've been there trying to rinse shampoo with a sad little drip and it's infuriating. Right. Well, what if I told you electricity has its own version of water pressure? Today, we're taking a deep dive into voltage, um, a concept that sounds complex, but is actually incredibly practical for, well, anyone who uses anything powered by electricity. Yeah, it really is. Our mission today is to unpack whether more voltage is always better or if there's a just right zone for electricity, you know, helping you understand it all at an eye level. And what's fascinating here is how understanding voltage can genuinely change how you interact with well, everything from your hair dryer to the power grid itself. Mm. We'll be drawing insights from Gyuzhevabak Rian, which is a fantastic Korean source that offers some incredibly clear explanations, really breaking down these core concepts for beginners. Okay, let's unpack this then. So the water pressure analogy. If it's too low, you wait forever to fill a bucket, right? Uh, tedious. But if it's too high, you might burst pipes or even get hurt, like... Uh, at a car wash where those high pressure hoses can actually cause injury if you're not careful. Exactly. It's about control and safety. So it's about finding that balance. Absolutely. And voltage behaves similarly. If voltage is too low, the current just trickles like slow water, meaning you can't get enough power where you need it. Okay. Think of a device barely turning on, kind of sputtering. Yeah, like a dim light bulb or something. Precisely. Yeah. Conversely, if the voltage is too high, it becomes dangerous. We need much thicker insulation around wires you know, like reinforcing those water pipes, to handle it safely. Ah, okay. For example, the rubber coating around wires needs to be much, much thicker. And this raises an important question. What are the real-world implications of this for, like, cost and safety? Right. So it's not just about getting power. It's about getting it smartly. Thicker insulation and uh, more complex safety measures because of high voltage yeah. That means significantly higher costs. That's yeah, it. The real genius of voltage, as we're seeing, isn't just delivering power, but doing it efficiently and safely. It's this kind of delicate dance where every volt higher often demands exponentially more in safety features and, well, money. Mm -hmm. So that Goldilocks zone isn't just a cute metaphor. It's like the economic and engineering sweet spot that keeps our power grid effective and, crucially, keeps us safe without breaking the bank. Well put. Yeah. Okay, so we've established voltage has its sweet spot, but that's just the start. I mean, think about how far electricity has to travel from these massive power plants, maybe hundreds of miles away, all the way to your wall outlet. It's quite a journey. It really is. So that makes me wonder, does that pressure of electricity stay exactly the same during that whole epic journey? Ah, uh, good question. Yeah. No, not at all. In fact, oh. voltage changes strategically along its path. Really? How? Well, from its generation at the power plant, through those huge steel towers you see crossing mountains and fields. Yeah, the big ones. To substations, then onto you know, the city poles, and finally into buildings like yours. Each segment uses a different appropriate voltage level. Okay. It's all about balancing economic efficiency with safety, making sure you have the right voltage for the right part of the trip. So it's planned out. Very much so. And stepping back for a moment, this standardization of voltage for different parts of the grid, that's called nominal voltage. Nominal voltage, got it. It's the officially designated voltage for that part of the system, chosen really carefully for both economy and safety across the whole transmission and distribution network. So these aren't just like random numbers then. We're talking about familiar ones like maybe 110V or 220V. Exactly. Those are common nominal voltages for end users. But also less common ones you might hear about in industry or for long distance transmission, like 380V or even, wow, 22.9 kilovolts, 154 kilovolts, 345 kilovolts. That's right. Those higher numbers are for moving power efficiently over long distances. Big numbers. And when we talk about the power flowing through those huge transmission lines, we're often talking about the voltage between two of those lines, right? Correct. That specific measurement is called line voltage. It's a really critical measure for those high power systems. Okay, line voltage. That makes sense for the big lines, but that makes me wonder then if the voltage is changing along the way, how do our specific devices, like my phone charger or my TV, how do they know what voltage to use? Ah, uh, yes. Because we see different numbers on our electronics, don't we? Exactly right. When you look closely at an electrical appliance or you know any machine, 
you'll often see something called rated voltage printed on it somewhere. Rated voltage, okay. And that is the specific voltage that particular device needs to operate normally and safely. Needs. So it's not optional. Not really, no. Mm -hmm. If a product is marked, say, 12V, and you try to plug it into something giving it significantly higher or lower voltage, well, its normal operation isn't guaranteed. Right. And you could even damage the device or worse, create a safety hazard. It's a really crucial piece of information for any user to check. Oh, okay. So for you listening, the practical takeaway here is pretty clear. Always check the rated voltage on your electrical products. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And make sure you're supplying the correct power. Sounds simple, but it's a step that ensures both safety and, you know, the longevity of your devices. Saves you headaches and money down the line. Definitely worth the few seconds it takes to check. So we've talked about voltage changing across the grid and devices having their own rated voltage. But what about those bigger sort of broader labels we sometimes hear like low voltage wiring or high voltage areas? Oh. Are those just casual descriptions or is there an official system behind them you know, to keep us safe? Oh, they are very much official. In Korea, for instance, the electrical regulations, specifically the Korean Electrical Equipment Regulations, or KEC, they divide voltage into three main types. Okay, three types. Low voltage, high voltage, and special high voltage. Low, high, and special high. Exactly. And this classification system, it's evolved over time. There are standards back in 62, revisions in 74, and the current ones have been in place since about 2021, constantly updated to reflect new tech and safety knowledge. It's all about improving protection and how we manage power. Right, keeping up with the times. So what do these categories actually mean for like the average person? Good question. So to put it simply, low voltage, that's mostly with the general public encounters and controls, is defined as DC 1500 volts or AC 1000 volts or less. Okay. So this includes the 220V and 380V used in our homes and buildings. Basically think of it as the electricity that's generally considered safe for you to interact with directly through you know, standard outlets and appliances. The DC limit, 1500V, is influenced by things like subway power systems. Ah, interesting. Okay, so that's low voltage. What about high voltage? High voltage is the next step up. It's anything greater than low voltage, but only up to 7,000 volts. 7,000. Yeah. And this range is typically handled by trained electrical technicians, people with special duties. It's definitely not something the average person should be interacting with directly. Gotcha. Stay clear. And the last one. Special high voltage. Special high voltage, as the name suggests, is everything above that. So any voltage exceeding 7,000 V. Wow. This is for the really big stuff, the major power lines, those huge transmission towers, big industrial installations, and again, managed only by highly specialized electrical technicians. Okay, that classification system makes sense from a safety perspective, mm -hmm. but I'm still curious why those specific numbers, 1500 V for DC low voltage, 7000 V separating high and special high, is there some like deep electrical theory behind those thresholds? You know, that's a great question. And the answer is actually simpler than you might think. No. Yeah. These voltage distinctions, they aren't really based on some intricate theoretical calculation or mm. universal law of physics. Mm. Instead, they're determined more by considering the uh, degree of danger involved and practicality. Often, they align with established international safety standards, too. So it's about risk assessment. Exactly. It's safety first, especially making that clear distinction for the general public who mainly interact with low voltage. The numbers are essentially set where the risk profile changes significantly enough that it demands different handling procedures, different equipment, different levels of training, and safety protocols. Okay, that makes practical sense, safety-driven. Mm -hmm. Now, shifting gears slightly, when we talk about electricity, especially these bigger numbers, we often hear terms like kilovolts or maybe milliampers for current. It can feel like learning a whole new language with these prefixes, kilo, milli, mega. Huh? What, what do they actually mean? That's a great observation, and yeah, it can seem like alphabet soup at first. But to express these very large or sometimes very small electrical quantities easily, we use a standard range of prefixes. Okay. And knowing these can be incredibly helpful for you just to quickly grasp the scale of what's being discussed mm -hmm. without having to count like endless zeros. Yeah, avoiding all those zeros would be nice. Right. Think of them like shortcuts for really big or really tiny numbers. Okay. So what are the common ones we should know? All right. Let's run through some key ones you'll definitely encounter when talking about electricity. Mm. We have the ones for large numbers, K, kilo. That represents 1,000 times. So a kilovolt of KV is simply 1,000 volts. 
pretty common. Okay, kilo is a thousand. M mega. That's a thousand times a million. So a megawatt MW of power is a million watts. Mega million. Got it. T giga. That represents one million times or one billion. Think gigahertz, gigahertz for computer speeds. That's billions cycles per second. Giga billion. Okay, there's tera too, right? Like terabytes. Yep. T tera is a trillion, one followed by 12 zeros. You might see terahertz, t hertz in some high frequency applications. Wow. Okay, so those are the big multipliers. What about the small ones? All right, for quantities less than one, ME, this one's very common. It represents 0. 0.0001 or 1,000th. So a milliampere MA of current is one thousandth of an ampere. Milli, thousandth, okay. Micro. This is the Greek letter mu, and it represents 0.00000001, one millionth. You see microfarads a lot in electronics for capacitors. Micro, millions. Then we get even smaller, in, nano. That's 0.00000001, one billionth, like nanometers, nm, for tiny distances, p, pico. And even smaller, 0 0.00000000001, one trillionth. You might see picofarads, PF, for very small capacitances. Boo. Okay, kilo, mega, giga for big, milli, micro, nano, pico for small. Wow, so learning these prefixes really is like getting a cheat sheet, isn't it? It really is. It instantly helps you grasp the enormous scale of, say, a 345 kilovolt power line versus the tiny, maybe milliampere currents or microfarad components inside your smartphone. Exactly. It puts it all into perspective. That makes understanding this whole world of electricity so much more accessible, I think. Yeah, definitely helps. So stepping back for just a moment, what we've really seen today is that voltage isn't just some static number. It's actually carefully managed force. Mm -hmm. It's constantly being balanced. Power, safety, cost throughout its entire journey from the power plant right to your outlet. Yeah. It's all about precision and having a purpose at every single step just to make sure we get the right amount of energy safely and efficiently. That's a great summary. It's a dynamic system. So for you listening, the next time you plug in a device or maybe even just look up at a power line crossing overhead, how might understanding voltage's complex journey, these different classifications like low and high voltage, change the way you think about energy use mm. and maybe safety in your own home or your community? What small safety checks might you think about doing differently now that you know about rated voltage on your appliances and these different categories of electrical power? Something to think about.